Hi and welcome back to my channel and continue to talk about how to put a large language model in some kind of edge computing, for example, Raspberry Pi. And if you missed in the previous video, we simply downloaded through Olama a pre-trained model which is called uh, Tiny Dolphin. Today we are instead focusing more on doing some kind of fine-tuning or refining a pre-trained model with some additional information rather than using alternative approach of uh, RAG. More specifically, I'm taking again uh, Tiny Dolphin or Tiny Llama, that are kind of very similar, and I'm going to give some background about how these models uh, are being introduced and how we can do some kind of fine tuning with them. We're going to use Tiny Dolphin, but I start from Tiny Llama because Tiny Dolphin is substantially an extension, uh, a, train, a further training from Tiny Llama. And this is the original paper from Tsang et al. with this nice little cute uh, llama. And it says that it's been trained to 1.1 billion uh, uh, parameters uh, with 1 trillion tokens and 3 epochs. If you read the paper that I put in, uh, in the description, you can find some details how they did the uh, pre-training and, and which data set they use. But also important to see that they use the, uh, it's based on the llama 2 architecture. And if you go into GitHub, you can find different uh, models that you can download. Regarding the Tiny Dolphin, it's been introduced by Eric Hartford, as I was saying, as a, some kind of uh, further fine tuning of uh, Tiny Llama, more specifically following the Orca approach. And the idea is that it's mostly based for instruction uh, approach and is based on reinforcement learning. I'm going to use this dataset, though there are many datasets if you go on the Hugging Face uh, repository, there are all of these. But going back to the one we are going to use today is because I like it that this, it's a couple of prompts that is typically used, can be typically found also in ChatGPT. Let's say you propose a, a style and it's giving you kind of how it looks like uh, the, the type of answer. These are the library we need to import and these are the typical libraries that have been used for um, in Hugging Face plus I need to force some version to fit uh, to avoid some conflicts because uh, they, we need to access both the dataset and the model and even if though it's giving me this kind of error this is the trade-off I found to, to run everything in, in Colab directly. Another thing you need to do is to take the, your um, key token from Akin Face. I'm not going to show you exactly where is it, but I'm going to show you that you simply need to go to the, your profile and go to access tokens and copy the token you want to use and paste it uh, in the in the space that's going to be asked you. This is the after some imports. Uh, you essentially need to choose the the name you want to load from uh, Akin Face. And you can either use this tiny dolphin, as I was telling you, and you can see here why is this, the path looks like that, or tiny llama as well. So it's more or less the same principle. Then how you want to save the name and the name of the dataset we also want to use. Now we should prepare our dataset, as I was telling you, but I'm simply using one of the training datasets that has been available on Agin Face. And if you go and see, they also give you a tutorial how you should load this uh, dataset because this data is substantially composed by different uh, components related. So we have the user and assistant or act and assistant. And the idea is that you are pairing uh, what the user is asking you, so the act and what the assistant is supposed to reply. And this can be uh, included in this kind of Lambda function that is ordering these two elements and uh, loading it in your environment. And if you want to see the first element, you can see that there is a, this component I was telling you of the user and the assistant. So it's pairing what the user is going to ask with what will be kind of the reply look like. Now the concept principally of this training is based on uh, LoRa. If you, I'm not going to explain in the details of LoRa. I'm just want to put this uh, reminder. So the idea of LoRa is that you're not retraining completely a model, but you are you are adding some information to it during the model, in the model. And these are the where you can put some parameters. For example, how much you, how often you're seeing the log the results, the learning rate, when you're going to stop. 
and you can launch in this way with the training and see what's, what's going to happen. Now, if you look at the training loss, it's supposed to go down. So these are our, our steps. And if you can see, it's going actually down from 2.5 to 1.0 and so on to 1.19. And even more, if you, you can look in details, so if you plot the tensor board uh, and, and you see more in details, like is what's going to happen. Even more, you can look at your using tensor board, how the, the training is, is, is going on. Now, this is the part where we are actually uh, finalizing the checkpoint of the model. For example, if you choose the checkpoint to add the 250, and we can save, in our case, it's going to save in the, our uh, space in Colab, which is kind of probably your uh, Google Drive. And from there, you can simply uh, download it. The important thing is that you save it as a bin or PTH file. Once you have downloaded it, you can put it in a folder where it's specific for like, for example, if you want to run it locally with Olama, you can you have to simply put it together in the usual structure from, from Olama, which are, contains these elements config and you kind of reproduce the YAML file. Once you have that, you have to simply do Olama run and let's say my tiny dolphin. This didn't take a lot. You can even run it on your uh, collab and it was gonna take um, roughly 10 minutes or, or a bit more, depending also if you use CPU or GPU. And once you save it, you can simply download it, put it here and do what you want with it. I hope this has been useful and let's see next time and to see what we can do with language model embed in a small device or wearable like this. Bye.